So a very good afternoon to everybody and today uh, we are here to discuss this uh, characters uh, in Arundhati Roy's novel the uh, ministry of uttermost happiness uh, and it's a very complex uh, novel uh, the the very narrative is very complex uh, there are so many characters here and it is very difficult to uh, uh, list down all the characters even while we do first reading of the novel, uh, we, uh, we we face a problem whether this character is very important or a marginalized character. That also we we, we challenge uh, it challenges us. So whether to take not of that character or not, uh, we we uh, remain in doubt. And suddenly that character becomes somewhere very important, or uh, the life of one character intersects with the life of another character suddenly and then we realize that we will have to go back again to read the novel or to find what that character exactly was, what was that doing and so uh, we have to go into the backstory of those characters. So uh, uh, while reading once or twice uh, 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 it is very difficult to open up the entire novel uh, thoroughly, it is so complex. Uh, so let us try to see here that how we can do that. We have. Uh, divided this world of uh, ministry of utmost happiness in in five parts. So, uh, like we have uh, one world is the Kashmir world. Then there is this Danda uh, Karanyak, uh, the Maoist world uh, in the central India. Danda uh, Karanyak world, the, the forest, Bastar, Chhattisgarh, Andhra Pradesh, that that world here. Uh, but that comes much later on in the second part of the novel. First part of the novel, uh, the initial part of the novel deals with Khwabga, uh, uh, Khwabga, uh, Jannat, uh, begins with Jannat graveyard, uh, it deals with Jantar Mantar uh, thing. So, uh, we say that there is a five world. Uh, that there is Khwabga world, there is Jannat, the graveyard world, there is Jantar man Mantar world, and then there is Kashmir, and then there is Dandak Aranya. That five worlds are there where all the characters are dispersed in all this world. And it seems that well, all these characters might have as such no connection with each other. Uh, in the length and breadth of India, they are spread across. And it seems that how would their life or their story would intersect with each other. And that, and that is where the story and the novel is written uh, in that context there. So let us see the characters and try to see how we can uh, find some meaning uh, or connection uh, with this. And it is a novel, so it's a story. So how we find uh, the story is also opening up before our eyes. So both the tasks simultaneously, study of character, uh, their interrelations with each other and the story, uh, how it is going on, that we will see there. So when the novel begins, novel begins uh, in Jannat graveyard that the novel begins and uh, obviously it begins with uh, a kind of a feeling of something like uh, 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 there is a, some some kind of a surreal surreal uh, environment or, or a sort of uh, we can say magic realism A sort of magic realism or a surreal effect with which the novel opens or it, it begins also. Uh, let us uh, have uh, somewhere uh, a reading of that part also. So some part we will try to see, uh, uh, to read and see how it is happening as such. So we are in the first world, that is the Jannat, the graveyard. It opens there. So the very first sentence, it opens in this way. She lived in the graveyard like a tree. She lived in a graveyard like a tree. And that is how it begins. Now, who is she? Uh, which obviously remains a question for a couple of pages. And it seems sometimes that uh, the writer is talking about tree. And tree is personified as she. So that is that surreal or magic realism kind of a technique of writing where we get confused whether you are talking about a tree in a graveyard or are you talking about a human being who has become a tree. Has a human being become a tree and has a tree got a consciousness of some kind of a thing that 
there are birds coming the birds going over my branches the birds are dying yeah, uh, and the thing because uh, the title of this uh, this uh, this first part is where do old birds go to die it's a question uh, mark there where do old birds go to die and very interestingly it speaks that how would birds uh, birds die they don't fall on us we have never seen the dead body of a, of a bird they they fly and they don't fall on anybody we don't see normally the dead bodies of the bird unless it is hunted by cat or eagles or any other thing otherwise how how or where would this birds going to to die and how so again a very surreal or magic realism technique that we see at dawn she so the crows off and welcome the bats home at dusk she did the opposite at dawn at dusk she did the opposite between shifts she conferred with the ghost of vultures that loomed in her high branches in her high branches so it seems like this is a tree and tree has a branches and on the high branches of the tree the vultures are coming so that is that beginning a very surreal uh, uh, kind of the thing which which takes time to uh, open up the thing when she first moved in she endured months of casual cruelty like a tree would now there is a difference here. now she and tree is getting differentiated in the second paragraph there and then so when she came here first time she endured the kind of a suffering that any tree or any sapling would perhaps undergo you pick up a sapling and you put it somewhere in a new new land what kind of suffering would the tree uh, 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 undergoing we don't know we never feel that we are happy that we have done tree plantation but we never feel that you have taken a tree from a nursery where the tree was with the friends and the tree was growing with all those friends and suddenly you have picked up you have torn those that plastic bag <laughs> removed the roots out and you have put somewhere uh, there they're all alone that tree has to grow or maybe make new friends with the surrounding and we don't know how the things will go how how that tree will deal with the squirrels or the insects inside the land <laughs> we don't know but there is anxiety when human beings are are are, are picked up from somewhere and suddenly drafted some at another place we use the word moor sota ukadwa for diaspora people we say moor sota je logo ukri jaye and pachi they they have to get a, a new new land for example in uh, in india we have seen so many sindhis sindhi who drifted from pakistan sindh pran and then spread across india wherever they found a place and then so they had that moor sota ukri jo and then trying to find a new land a new accommodation new way of doing everything suddenly so that that feeling is being put here she and tree now when we see that this she this she the tree which is there which actually turns into anjum later on as we move on we find it is the story of anjum but in an interesting way it opens up that there was a person there was a person uh, Uh, who, whose name is not there? The, the the name of the person is not there, but that person is uh, known as uh, as the man who knew English is known as ma- the man who knew uh, English. this becomes a character for a while in, in a beginning part an unnamed character but then we realize that this the man who knew english was one of the clients of anjum when she was much younger the younger hijra who had the clients uh, and she uh, the, the, was one of the the clients uh, uh, there okay? and uh, this the man who knew english used to say that your name is an inverted of majnu is an inverted of majnu <laughs> and then it gets connected with laila majnu and then a kind of a love story that it is uh, referred here in the beginning and then she tells me it is not actually majnu because when we see majnu m a j n u the uh, the reverse one is uh, it opens up uh, the laila majnu 
it opens U N J A M. It is something like unjung, but exactly not unjung. It is something like unjung. That is what the man who knew English used to say unjung, and the the opposite is majnu. Uh, but it is not exactly so. But that that reference comes, and he says that no, it is he was wrong. It is not uh, uh, majnu as such. My name is Anju. That is we come to know that that is Anju, and says Anju means mehfil. Anju means mehfil. Mehfil is a gathering of people where people do party. So so my name is uh, is has that positive connotation where. People get together uh, with with some kind of positive feelings. It's a mahfil uh, that they they come. It is a gathering. Uh, that that is my name. And says of gathering of everybody and nobody, of everything and nothing. Gathering of what? Mahfil of what? Mahfil of everybody and nobody, of everything and nothing. So this is how he says. Is there anyone else who would like to invite? Uh, everyone's invited in this mahfil that is anjum. Everyone's invited. So that is where now we are in jannat. So this jannat, which is you know the graveyard, jannat is something where people don't die. There is no death as such. That is jannat. But this is the graveyard where people come after death. Maybe in jannat also people go after death. So all those parallel readings so of jannat and the graveyard can be seen uh, that you you. You you cross the you you cross the, the that river ultimate river where there is no now happiness or unhappiness as such you are beyond sorrows and suffering that is that world that is jannat the heaven the paradise that people go so here everybody is invited in this jannat that is the uh, anjum's character which begins in in in, in such a such a way. So that is uh, how uh, it goes, and then there is another character who who comes to meet her, this old uh, Anjum, and that character is Ziauddin. Ziauddin uh, is a blind imam. This blind Imam uh, Ziauddin uh, is the one who is uh, coming there from Fatehpur uh, uh, Masjid uh, at this place, and that's how the life is that going on there. Uh, the second chapter, uh, with second chapter, we enter into Khwabga. Khwabga. That is so. We shift from Jannat to Khwabga in second chapter. And here we have the back story of Anjum. Anjum's back back story we we get here, and uh, uh, we come to know that uh, uh, Anjum is born as Aftab. The story begins with the birth of Aftab. Uh, that is the beginning of the back story of Anjum, and uh, the the mother is Jahan Ara, who is introduced first to us, Jahan Ara Begum. And then we come to know that the husband is Mulakat Ali, that is the father of Anjum or Afta at this level is born as a boy. And then, but the mother had seen that the boy has born with uh, with the genitals of boy as well as girl, uh, uh, both the genitals. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, India uh, 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 we have an uh, obsession for a boy child. Uh, even if it is a Muslim family, they would still be happy to have a boy child. Uh, when, when the, uh, the the lady who is uh, the midwife, uh, midwife's name is Ahlam Baji. Ahlam. Ahlam. A H L A M Baji. Or you can say Baiji, Ahlam Baiji, who is uh, the midwife. Uh, she announced, she announced that uh, uh, this uh, is a boy, and everybody is happy. But mother is not. Mother uh, had seen that there is a female genital also. 
and thought that after some time the female genital will be sealed off naturally and uh, this boy will remain a boy only that is what she thought and and hid the fact from everybody but when when this realization comes to jahan ara uh, very in a very interesting prose uh, arundhati roy is writing that that when first time uh, jahan ara comes to know that there are uh, there are this genitals of man as well as uh, uh, women or a boy as well as girl uh, at that level at that stage when aftab is still a little uh, a boy then it is very shocking to her and then uh, uh, arundhati roy is writing her first reaction there are series of reactions which jahan ara begum is giving to herself her first reaction was to feel her heart constrict and her bones turn to ash and her bone turn to ash her second reaction was to take another look to make sure she was not mistaken her third reaction was to recoil from what she had created while her bowels convulsed and a thin stream of shit ran down her legs her fourth reaction was to contemplate killing herself and her child now see to what extent people are in shock and how this prose is telling us this the level of shocks that the the mother is undergoing when finds that uh, the kid is uh, uh, having uh, the the genitals of uh, the girl also her fifth reaction was to pick her baby up and hold him close while she fell through a crack between the world she knew and worlds she did not uh, uh, know existed so this new identity suddenly the people may be born with such a kind of a condition also that was completely unknown to zahana rabe and suddenly the new world is opening before her eyes that there can be such a kind of a thing uh, also well this 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 lines or, or subsequently when uh, we, we think of anjum or aftab who turns into anjum uh, it gives a very interesting or very serious consideration into the third gender identities because normally we either have a funny way of looking at third gender people make fun in our popular cinema or in any other ways we have rather uh, the third gender is for fun people make fun on them or they are completely kind of a, of a bechara kind of a people but what the really things are there with them and how they have to fight with their own body with their own self and then the people around them how they have to comply how terrible it is now this all happens because we do not have the language to see this world and because we don't have a language we don't know that this world existed so this world exists outside our language and we have to think of that new language to understand this world without that we won't be able to give ample space to this third gender uh, identities so that is what uh, 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 he says there and uh, he says in urdu uh, her language was urdu jahanara begum's language was urdu in urdu the only language she knew all things not just living things but all things carpets clothes books pens musical instruments had a gender had a gender everything was gender then their world is either male or female either masculine or feminine so in your language that is urdu the only language you know zahanara begum here uh, everything is gender there is nothing that is third gender in, in that language uh, everything was either masculine or feminine man or women everything except her baby <laughs> everything except her baby had either this gender or the other one yes of course she knew there was a word for those like him there is a word and that word is hijra there is a word so we get to this word uh, in, in the novel here so that is the identity of anjum as one of the uh, themes of uh, this novel also is uh, identity identity of this so anjum or aftab's identity hijra two words actually hijra and kinnar 
there is this word kinner also but two words do not make a language but two words cannot make entire language so this is all about that language which arundhati roy is very much aware about and even from this world of gender when she moves to this world of jantar mantar or this world of kashmir or dandak aranya everywhere there is this problem of language that how do we perceive all the events and incidents that go around us in our our own india in our own nation in the time in which we are living all these things are happening but what language do we have to look at those things she speaks in a in an unknown language or rather a language which one can easily say it is an anti national language a seditious language or a language which should not be spoken of <laughs> or that is not the reality but that language is not a reality that is how normally it is seen so from gender to all these issues and there is a connection link that we can perceive what is possible to live uh, sorry uh, uh, was it possible to live outside language <laughs> in your language there is no space for this identity now can i live without language can i live outside my language and nearly impossible in structuralism and post structuralism we have seen that how language gives us world view and how it is difficult for us to escape the world view that language has given to us we know that language is outside us language was there before we were before we were born language was there and we have to adjust with the existing language we can't do anything with that so we are a puppet of the language and the language has already defined everything right wrong black white good evil god uh, uh, satan heaven hell everything is already defined now i don't have to question those things i just have to adjust myself into the existing world uh, there is no option at all and so that question that comes to jahanara uh, begum that was it possible to live outside language naturally this question did not address itself to her in words or as a single lucid sentence it addressed itself to her as a soundless embryonic how so there is no answer to to this so that is how uh, this begins so as we have said that uh, uh, the novel is not only about story that what is the story what are the characters but there is something else which is very interestingly interwoven by arundhati roy there are ongoing debates about lot many things and arundhati roy gives a very interesting insight into all those things that is going so reading this chapter of anjum or afta Uh, uh, anybody can easily change their way of looking at third gender. They become obviously not a sympathetic like you say a bichara kind of a thing, but you understand the anxiety of the people. You understand that uh, being so and so is not an easy task. There is a tough challenges that one person might have undergone uh, with those uh, uh, things or those identities also. That is why. Uh, that is why later on when. uh, uh anjum uh, is talking about those things in khwabga uh, uh, she comes with very interesting uh, 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 analogy uh, of uh, uh, the things uh, if i can very quickly find that ah uh, yes so it says that in in the world there is there is uh, the outside khwabga uh, there is a world uh, outside khwabga there is a world which is known as duniya that is this duniya so this is again uh, we can say khwab ka means a ple- uh, place of dreams this khwab sapno ki duniya so it is uh, a place of dreams as as we say here it is the dreams then this world that is this duniya duniya is about uh, uh, about reality this this khwabga uh, is about the world of dreams then this dunya and, and then again and again they use the, the same word is used dunya only dunya means the outside world outside khwabga the different kind of people that they live who are really different kind of people people who live in khwabga they are different kind of people but for them because our perspective is centered around khwabga so for them the dunya is a different kind of people now this dunya the people of this dunya they are worried about so many issues when they open television the news channels are going on this television serial is coming people watch popular soaps 
popular television serials in Kwakwa and also news also time and again when something is happening there and then they say that uh, uh, see this dunya people <laughs> dunya wale <laughs> this people they are unhappy they are unhappy and what makes them unhappy why this dunya wale are unhappy because there is price rise <laughs> because uh, children's uh, school admissions are to be taken care of husbands beating domestic violence uh, wife cheatings hindu muslim riots indo pakistan war now china also uh, and and all those things uh, they they all, all fight for this and they are unhappy because this issues are there and then says that well we don't have all those problems <laughs> we don't have all those uh, problems because he says all those things but for us the price rise and school admissions and beating husbands and cheating wives are all inside us all inside us they are not outside they are all inside us the riot is inside us the war is inside us indo pak is inside us it will never settle down it can't so that body and then that self either you are a man or a woman you are a boy or a girl you don't know still still that it will take time for a hormonal change ultimately what hormonal changes will come that your identity will be either a male or a woman you may be a woman trapped in man's body you may be a man trapped in women's body and then you go to doctors for surgical operations and try to see that well now uh, uh, by mind uh, by my temperament uh, 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 by tendencies tendencies there is a very interesting word for tendencies uh, uh, urdu word uh, that is uh, used fitrat <laughs> fitrat uh, fitrat the uh, fitrat is of a man but you have uh, uh, your body is women's body your fitrat your tendency is man or your tendency is of a woman but your body is man's body so how do you do this the riots are inside indo pak is inside all the problems are inside you and you don't know how to settle uh, those the thing so this is this world of khwabga uh, and there are so many characters uh, that they live there in khwabga Uh, a few of the important one which repeatedly keep on coming uh, there if we list down those characters here then we have uh, uh, very importantly in the top gap was bombay sink uh, and as we have to see the back story also of all these things uh, and so uh, when aftab is sitting in the gallery and aftab little boy do not like to mix with anybody else uh, is not going out but just their and mother is worried about aftab that if the other people will come to know they will make fun of aftab so she is not allowing aftab to go anywhere she takes uh, extra care of aftab but aftab is growing 5 years 6 years 7 8 9 10 years uh, and then but sits in the gallery and keeps on watching and one day suddenly is watching in the street that shopping is going on and one very beautifully dressed with good makeup uh, which is very curious to see in a muslim community because most of the women will be in burqa and they will not have this makeup which is an outside visible makeup so one lady is going there and he is surprised to see who is this lady and comes down to see what she is doing so is doing some shopping there and then follows her and by following bombay sink uh, he reaches now aftab is he and we keep on using either he or she with uh, aftab or anju and reaches to khwabga and she goes inside khwabga and that was the first time that the little boy is seeing uh, that and then later on we come to know that that was bombay sink uh, was quite beautiful a uh, uh, hijra uh, beautiful a uh, uh, hijra there and then with that there are other characters like uh, mary who is the only christian there mary is the only christian then there are uh, two hindu hijras also there uh, gudia and bulbul yes gudia and bulbul uh, then there is uh, bismillah also known as bimla it's bismilla bimla is the another character there then razia
निम्बू बरफ पुरी निम्बू गरफ पुरी सो दिस आर सम ऑफ द इंपोर्टेंट हिजरा लिविंग इन फाबगा विच इज अ प्लेस फॉर द हिजरा इट इज अ हवेली इट इज अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अ हवेली which has its own story as uh, the 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 leader of all these people or the 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 nayak of this gharana there is the gharana system in hijraz and in this gharana system the the leader is uh, kulsum b the leader of this is begum kulsum b begum kulsum the words will be recipient here and this is uh, she is the leader and she is very proud of this haveli this gharana uh, of uh, the hijras and this this fagga this haveli was made by the mughal emperors uh, a special place was given to the hijras by the mughal emperors uh and uh, uh, in 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 the time of mughal emperors they were quite interestingly respected also this were the people who were taking care of the wives of the mughal emperors and they have a deep faith uh, among these hijras also so there was that interesting connection there uh the next story here obviously tells us that uh, occasionally kulsum b uh, kulsum b takes all these hijras to red fort and in in the red fort a uh, lal killa uh, there is a, a light and sound show uh, light and sound show uh, and in that light and sound sound show there is a, a display of the history of mughal emperors history of mughal and kulsum bi used to take everybody there not only for the thing that what kind of fights and horse riding and battle cry and everything is going on not for that but there the reference will come for this hijras also in the history of moguls uh, 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 there is a special place of this hijras who were caretaker of their wives and other thing as as we know that uh, mughal emperor obviously had used to have lot many wives and uh, there are always chances that they may fall in love with anybody else so you can't have a man inside uh, the janana janana khana for the taking care of of the the, the wives or queens or the women so you have to have hijras there uh, to take care of uh, those uh, thing and so that that story for that part kulsum b would take all the hijras to watch uh, those thing around the roy do refers to the idea that with the change in the government now the, the the history is changing and people writing new history and people don't want to read the history of mughal emperors now you want to tell a story of the of the rajputs and other thing rather than the moguls now in that a new light and sound show perhaps will also erase the history of kulsum b also <laughs> in the rewriting of a new history but at this history and then maybe for this people there won't be any charm in going to the red fort to see that history that is unfolding now what arundhati roy says that well time and again when the power changes there is always an attempt to rewrite history it is an ongoing process but well every time when we rewrite the history there are so many identities which are erased such a kind of an eraser that happens that the identities which are powerless not in power they don't have a voice they they won't be there to say that why are you erasing us because they won't have that voice so this people obviously today history is written they obviously are so marginalized that nobody will care whether their identity is being erased or not so that is how that next story of the hijra community the gharana of hijras that also come here now when when we see this story zahan ara who is now story is moving ahead and finds that that kid with the uh, another genital and it is not automatically vanishing the the female genital is not vanishing so obviously any 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 women any mother would take uh, the kid to some of the peer or some temples uh, for some kind of mannat uh, they uh, would take and uh, zahan ara is taking to to hazrat sarmad shahid to the darga uh, darga of uh, uh, hazrat 
Sarmad. And this story we have seen yesterday also. So very interestingly it unfolds that Zahanara is taking her, her, her kid to uh, see that the kid may have a proper gender. But well, uh, where is she taking? Taking to uh, uh, Sarmad and Sarmad himself has a very conspicuous story. He was in love with Abhay Chand. So there is uh, the character of uh, Abhay Chand, a Hindu, huh? and uh, 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 Sarmad is an, uh, uh, coming from uh, 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 Iranian king, uh, Argentinian, and from there he comes down to Delhi for the love of Abhay Chand, and then uh, he gets uh, involved with Islam, becomes for a while a follow follower of Islam, and roams like a fakir, and then he, he disowns Islam also because not able to find ultimate answers of those things. And then the story we have seen yesterday, so very quickly we are jumping down to the story of uh, Hazrat Sarmat that uh, he used to roam naked and it was a time of Aurangzeb, so we get that character Aurangzeb also here, it's Aurangzeb and uh, Aurangzeb orders uh, for him in the, in the, uh, his red fort in his palace and uh, he is not reading the full Kalima, uh, La ilahi illallah and Muhammad is the messenger, uh, there is no God but Allah only, but he just speaks La ilah, means there is no God, that is the only thing that he recites and obviously uh, Aurangzeb and the Qazis are unhappy and he is beheaded uh, on the steps of Jama Masjid, where the very interesting story Arundhati Ray comes back to his Postmodernist narrative style to compare that tragic incident with something like a motorist who has dropped his his helmet <laughs> and as if he is picking up a helmet, uh, uh, Sarmad picked up his head <laughs> and went into Jama Masjid and from there to heaven. But that's a, again a very interesting way that how something that is highly respected is made fun of into the prose narrative. That is the style of writing that, that is what we see here also, the back part you see that image where there is Jesus Christ and then there are the people who are making fun of that, that bringing Jesus down or across, that's a, it's a huge event, it's a, 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 a very terrible, terrific event for Christians huh? that he was crossed and you are bringing the almost dead body of Jesus down and then there are some people there who are making fun of that very idea. Uh, there. So that is that bullet, the motorist with a helmet idea that comes there. Uh, but along with that, when the things happen, Dahanara ultimately has to tell this to Mulakat Ali, husband. And now, uh, Mulakat Ali is a Hakim, he is working for a Hakim, he is one who prepares medicines and other things. So he, he tells that you might have told all this earlier, we would have found some way out of something for doing the thing, but it is now too late for the things and that. Mulakat Ali also is not happy with this idea that to live uh, as a parent, as a parent of uh, a hijra is again something that is not into the language of society. That you do not remain a respectable individual if your child is a uh, hijra uh, or third gender. Uh, there. So it is again going out of the language of society uh, wherein we live and uh, the language is defined everything for us in a particular way. Uh, but Mulakat Ali's that story also comes along with this and again we get into an interesting idea that how many of the Muslims living in India, they still feel, even if they are in utter poverty, they are in utter poverty, but still they feel that they are, they are in the line of Mughal emperors. <laughs> so Mughal emperors were their uh, were forefathers and they belong to that line of Mughal emperors and Mughal emperors line will from there go to Chagatai and Chagatai was one of the sons of Changes Khan eh, who is also known as Temujin Temujin, Temujin or Changes Khan who is a Mongol who is a Mongol and very interesting in one or two lines only we get some interesting fact about the entire history of Mughals, Muslims, Mongols and where the Mulakat Ali stands there so, Arundhati Roy writes that <coughs> Mulakat, Ali, Mulakat Ali's father, forefathers belong to uh, the line of Mughal emperors. 
and beyond that they are they are in the line of chakta 12th or third generation the 13th generation parmi permi pedie kya ke connections bega thata hoy and then it goes to changes khan uh, and uh, uh, changes khan was not an, uh, a muslim he was rather anti islam he used to kill all the symbols of islam <laughs> that is that, that was changes khan he was worshipper of ऑफ स्काई गॉड स्काई गॉड ये तो कुदरत ने ईश्वर तरह के माननारी प्रजाति मंगोलियन दे यूज टू वर्शिप द स्काई गॉड और द नेचर एज गॉड नॉट समथिंग एज अल्लाह और अदर काइंड ऑफ थिंग रादर ही वाज एंटी ही वाज एंटी बट वन ऑफ हिज चिल्ड्रन्स व्हेन दे वन ओवर अरेबिक वर्ल्ड अफगानिस्तान एंड बियॉन्ड अफगानिस्तान दे केम इन कांटेक्ट विद इस्लाम एंड वन ऑफ देम कन्वर्टेड टू इस्लाम and that line continued as mughal emperors uh, in india uh, and and that is how the islam as a religion became the religion of the rulers uh, and and it has a spread because as soon as the the religion is connected with the rulers it it gets a a, a very interesting momentum uh, to spread very fast which is what we have seen in british history also that, uh, as and when the ruler is either protestant or anglican or roman catholic that religion will spread uh, 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 in the entire state also so that story we get of changes khan and other thing but along with that we also get a story of changes khan as a lover also <laughs> and his wife was borte khatum borte khatum was the wife for which he fought uh, and he has to fight for the wife uh, this was not an easy way to get borte khatum uh, and and then he has to abduct from uh, uh, the the enemies both the khatun the wife so that again comes with a very interesting parallel and in many indian mythology we find that uh, there are great heroes who has done abduction of their beloved or wives and either it is prithvi raj chauhan or krishna uh, and in many many uh, even in okha haran we have a different way uh, that uh, the male counterpart is abducted <laughs> so different stories that we have uh, of abduction of of people uh, out of love or for kind of a revenge that mythical connection we can see uh, there also so when talking about this uh, idea about uh, the third gender uh, and other things when sarmad is referred uh, in that context uh, this is not mulaqat ali story now but in different way there there is a reference to ramayana also which again we have referred yesterday so we are not going deep into that when uh, ram was going for 14 years of uh, of one was and people wanted him to stay there and not many people so he just addressed humorously that bhai aur behno as normally people address aap log ko main vinanti karta hu ki aap ghar wapas jaiye but then uh, the third gender said that we are not addressed we are, we are neither boy nor girl we are not bhai aur behno <laughs> so we are not so they stayed there for such a long time this is a myth uh, one can understand that well, such kind of things to be real is very difficult to perceive for 14 long years some people would stay just because this way it was addressed again is something that is unbelievable it's a myth that gets into the story so that reference also comes here so this part uh, which we see here about the childhood of afta uh, and uh, and, the, uh, and and the anxiety of mother and then father and then all those things has lots lots of complex narration that goes along with all this thing that it is moving uh, uh, on then uh, aftab makes a mind and wants to live with khwab in khwabga around 14 15 years of his age he makes his mind and uh, he, he insists the parents and parents also allow them it was very near to their home so mother can take care of uh, uh, anjum uh, or for mother it is aftab and for other people now it is anjum and uh, uh, every third day the lunch the hot meal will be taken by jahan ara in the khwabwa so uh, near the eyes uh, mother is taking care and but then anjum starts her own life uh, in khwabwa with kulsum b and other other characters uh, also there uh, now uh, there is a jump in the story and uh, 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 suddenly one day uh, when uh, anjum uh, with her maybe nimo gorakhpuri is the one with with whom she normally goes out uh, 
she has gone out and when they are visiting Jama Masjid, uh, uh, there, uh, on the steps of Jama Masjid, uh, she found a, a baby of around three years. It is Zaina. A baby. Zainab baby, Jama Masjid, uh, 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 Anjum is finding uh, this baby uh, there and then she is brought uh, uh, to Khwabga and, uh, and uh, she always wanted to be mother, there was a kind of uh, motherhood inside, there was a womanhood inside Anjum, uh, uh, trapped in male's body, she goes for operations also to some doctors but the operations are not successful some medicine, some pills also she is taking for quite a long time but that also is not quite successful in, in that cabin. She remains a, a kind of an in-between gender there. Uh, but that, uh, that, that cry for that mother, uh, that is uh, where and for that uh, This baby uh, comes as an answer to uh, uh, that and starts loving her as, as, as mother. Zainab. Uh, uh, Zainab is of the age of 5-6 uh, of, uh, years and is ready to go to school uh, but she suddenly uh, uh, fell ill. Now when so suddenly when Zainab fell ill, uh, Anjum, the mother thinks that there is there is another uh, lady, uh, there is another hijra, uh, Saida, uh, Saida, Saida, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Saida is seen as a as as an as an anti Anjum or a kind of an enemy uh, within Kwabga. So there are friends and enemies in Khwab girls. There are people with whom you have a good frequency and there are people with whom your frequencies don't match. Saida is one such. Uh, Anjum in the younger days was, was turned into a very beautiful hijra. So she was getting good consignment. So, so it, it turns down to be a kind of a brothel also where a, a, a hijra prostitution flourishes. So they work as a, as, as a prostitute also to some extent. Uh, and then when the foreigners come, they want to take interviews of these people, some research scholars from foreign countries come, they want to talk and uh, Anjum was one of the hot fabric among them. Lots of documentaries were made on Anjum's life, there were lots of photographs with so many foreigners and Indian clients and rich people and all those things, so it was kind of a successful hijra life that is going on. Saida comes and lots of those space is taken by Saida. Saida is more in demand as such and, and the kind of thing that happens. Now when Zainab becomes ill, uh, uh, suddenly uh, Anjum thinks that she is, Saida is doing black magic, simply magic, black magic on, uh, on Zainab and so uh, 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 she is ill. Now this is the reason that when uh, an, an old fellow, Zakir Mia, when the old fellow uh, in their family uh, Zahir Mia the, the family uh, family friend uh, Zakir Mia was going to Ajmer was going to Ajmer uh, Anjum also thinks that let me also come why? because she wants to fight with that Jadutona that Saida is doing on Jaira and so she wants to also go to Ajmer Sharif, the Majar, which is a very popular place and you want to go with Green Chandar there and your Mannat normally gets fulfilled at Ajmer Sharif. So she is going with a kind of a Mannat for, for Zainab, the daughter uh, to uh, Ajmer Sharif with Zakir Mia. Zakir Mia had some relatives in Gujarat, so thought that as we are going to Rajasthan, Ajmer, Gujarat is nearby in Ahmedabad, so they will come down to from Ajmer to Ahmedabad. They will come down 
uh, uh, from uh, there to uh, Ahmedabad also. And that is where the, uh, the one of the worst tragedies uh, 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 of the of the novel happens when they come to Ahmedabad. Uh, it is it is uh, the, the the time of uh, uh, 2002. 2002 uh, and uh, uh, as, a, as a reaction to uh, the 56 pilgrims uh, who were burnt in a train coach uh, 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 S26 train coach at, on, at Bodra railway station as a part of the reaction to that there were uh, 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 riots going on there 2002 uh, Gujarat uh, riots that happens and uh, uh, suddenly both of them are lost. There is no connection with anybody. Back home in Kwadga, people are glued to TV, watching what is going on and there is lots of riots, fire, everything going on. Uh, but they are trying to look in the background if they can get an image of either Zakir Mia or Anjum. But for quite a long time there is no message from uh, either of uh, them. Then, and then people are going. Uh, Anjum's brother uh, goes there in search of their relatives are going there uh, in search of their Sakib. Sakib is the brother who goes and then at one place suddenly finds Anjum completely changed. The hair are cut, really ugly looking. Uh, uh, Anjum very battered, uh, uh, unhappy. Uh, Anjum is suddenly found and then when she is asked what happened, where is Zakir Mia, she is not answering anything. She is not at all speaking anything about Zakir Mia and then she is brought back to Kwabga again. But then after that Anjum is completely changed. That all charm and the glamour which Anjum used to have is all lost now. Even her connection with Zainab is not very strong now. She is not very much now attached with, Zain, uh, 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 with Zainab also. Zainab has started now sleeping with Saida. She has now got a, a, like a more friendly with Saida in absence of Anjum uh, and but now uh, Anjum is not having that rivalry with Saida also that whatever happened but uh, she starts uh, starts uh, giving a boy's attire to Zaina see that, that you don't stay as a girl and, and then the trauma the trauma which Anjum has undergone in this riots that trauma has changed that behavior and, and she obviously remembers uh, later on when Kul Sun B and they all are asking and then they recalls and says that uh, very terribly uh, Zakir Mia was killed uh, by, uh, the, uh, by the mob uh, there and uh, she was, uh, she was uh, not killed only because she is Hijra and the people were speaking that killing a Hijra will be Apshakan. It will be ill omen, and so they did not kill uh, her. Uh, otherwise, she also might have been killed uh, 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 there also. So that that reference comes uh, 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 here, uh, and then uh, she is not uh, changing the attire of Zainab to a boy child and think that she also changes her attire from a girl to a boy. She starts wearing Pathani suit uh, and uh, with a short hair now. Now uh, uh, she is flaunting herself as a man rather than a woman. So the, all those changes happen because of traumatic experience in Ahmedabad. That happened with the historical episode of 2002 riots uh, there. And then she makes a mind that now she don't want to live in Kwabka because there are constant conflict with Kulsum B and other people. She wants to live in a different way. But they say that this is uh, the system of living here. Everybody has to live. Kulsum B is the leader and everybody will have to do what Kulsum B says. Anjum is not able to follow many of those uh, uh, things uh, there. And ultimately she leaves uh, uh, that, that place, leaving everything beside. And from there she moves to uh, the graveyard. The graveyard which was situated near a government hospital. And there was mortuary uh, where the dead bodies are kept. And just nearby there was a graveyard where she, she, uh, she went and started uh, staying uh, at this, this place uh, there. So that is, uh, that is one part of a story that ends here. Uh, the the Kwabga part of the story, the old Delhi part of a story of Aftab turning into Anjum and going through a traumatic experience of riots uh, in, in Gujarat and she has a sudden change of uh, or or a kind of a no interest in the worldly matters now. Wants to just 
keep on living, waiting for death. That kind of thing that happens to Anju, and she moves to uh, uh, Jannat, uh, the, the graveyard there, which remains the center of the narrative. At the beginning, the middle, the end also is uh, at uh, uh, Jannat graveyard, uh, and she starts staying there. She builds one room. Uh, uh, comes in contact with uh, a builder, constructor, builder there, and uh, uh, there is a uh, contractor Gupta, who who is the regular visitor uh, at this place, uh, and uh, uh, he is helping uh, in in construction of the thing. So one room, two room, three rooms, more people come here, and it turns into Jannat guest house slowly and steadily. It turns into Jannat, Jannat guest house, wherein uh, uh, the rooms are are built around the graves. Uh, around the graves are as it is, and people live with. Uh, they stay overnight with the graves. In between the graves, they have their beds, and they sleep along with the graves uh, in this Jannat uh, guest house. So uh, that is the life that is going on. So when we begin our story, it was. Uh, Anjum with her uh, uh, Ziauddin, blind imam, who is regularly visiting this place. There she is now again. Back. So that connection of the story we have done here. Uh, let us take a small break huh, to move to the another part of the story, which also will be a long narration of not many characters. So a small break of uh, I think you already had a lunch. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, 15 minutes break. Huh, let us take and then we will continue with the other part of the characters. Okay?